Graham Hill has always been a highly motivated and entrepreneurial individual. After college, he had a number of business ventures, including forays into fashion, viral email, plant-based air filters, and the creation of a web shop entitled SiteWorks. On his LinkedIn profile, Graham writes that he specializes in making a company from nothing into something. And if you've ever had the chance to sit down with him and brainstorm your project, you'll know what I'm talking about. He has a laser-like focus, he has ideas, lots of them, and they're always on target. But there's a lot more going on inside Graham's head than just business and profit. He's not interested in the bottom line. He's interested in the triple bottom line. Graham looks at how design and business combined can make something better. He calls himself a designpreneur. In 2003, Graham created treehugger.com, an online platform that ultimately became part of the Discovery's Planet Green Initiative. By using the site as a one-stop shop for green news, solutions, and product information, Treehugger works to make sustainability part of everyday life. Graham's now working on Life Edited, a so-called tiny, huge design competition. It began when Graham posed the question, what if we could save money, radically reduce our environmental impact, and have a freer, less complicated life. Life Edited is an open challenge for designers to create ultra-low footprint spaces. Graham lives in New York City, where he tries to think of other ways he can help humanity avoid rapid extinction. But we're lucky enough to have Graham here today in New Bedford, so please help me welcome Graham Hill. I'm gonna take you back uh, to the earlier part of uh, last century. It was a time of scarcity, the depression, the Dust Bowl, not a lot of food to go around. Smaller houses, uh, bread lines. And then there was World War II, where we had to scrimp and save even more. Uh, and so this is a great government poster, do with less so they'll have enough. And so really, uh, it was a time of scarcity. There wasn't a lot to go around. So much so that we even were saving fats to make explosives. So very different time. Then we entered a period of abundance. We had all these surplus production capacity, we knew how to build things, and we started to make more and more stuff. This was the golden age of advertising, when Madison Avenue really started. And we learned how to manufacture desire. It became clear to us that we actually needed white teeth which we may have not known before. And of course, uh, there's a product uh, to solve that problem. All this stuff that we never knew that we needed, we started making tons and tons of stuff. We created this picture, we were sold this picture of an idyllic family. Their technologies, their stuff, always smiling. The perfect house, the perfect car, the right cigarette. Look at this. Should a gentleman offer a tipperillo to a lab technician? Different times. <laughs> and the right fashion. Eleganza. <laughs> so this was a period where we really transitioned and became quantity over quality. We learned how to make more and more stuff more and more cheaply. First we made it here and then we pushed it offshore. We developed transportation systems to move ourselves and our stuff around, to get the stuff to large, big box stores, to the malls, which are now everywhere. And of course, to bring that stuff back to ever-increasing sprawl, where every person had their own house, of course, basically only, only accessible via car. So it became, it was about excess, it became America the big. Big egos, big houses, later called, nicknamed McMansions. Big vehicles, massive SUVs. The value pack, look at this, this is like 220 servings of uh, Quaker oatmeal. The hamburger grew in size. 
And this pretty much illustrates it. Back in the day, the standard, eight ounces. Now, 20 ounces. Two and a half times as big. So our portion size is literally tripled. And of course, we too have become, become larger. We also became more overwhelmed. It used to be easy to pick out a, a, a jar of mustard. Now it's a, quite a project. Uh-oh. Uh, advertising. So many options. Advertising hitting you at every angle. Times Square. Hitting you in your, on your computer, magazines, the top of the taxi cab, inside the taxi cab, taking the subway, above the subway, on the platform, in the subway, everywhere. And nowadays, because we're more nomadic and because of social media, we know a lot more people. And we need to communicate with all these people. So we've got Facebook, we've got LinkedIn, we've got Google+, we're emailing, we're IMing, we're Skype videoing, we're texting, we're tweeting, we're foursquaring, we're calling, we're landline, we're faxing. So many ways to communicate with so many people. Overwhelming. Media. It was complicated enough back then. TV, newspaper, radio, magazines. Now with the internet, way more. Cable, satellite, tons of ways to consume media and entertain ourselves. So it was a period, we've come to a point where it's just lots. It's big, it's lots. There's lots of communication, there's lots of media, We've got lots of space, we've got lots of stuff, lots of people that we know and we want to spend time with. It's overwhelming. Space, let's look at space. So over the past 50 years, the average house size has gone from 1,000 square feet to 2,300, while families have shrunk. So we have about three times the space that we had 50 years ago. That's a lot more space. We also have become so good at shopping, it's become a hobby. Shopping has somehow become a hobby. That we need more space besides that triple the space to store our, our other stuff. Personal storage has become a $22 billion, 2.2 billion square foot industry. Massive. So let's do a real status update. What, what has all this excess brought us? Where are we really? Financially, I think we know the story. Credit became cheaper, mortgages, credit cards. We've learned to live beyond our means. Here's household debt rocketing upwards. Health, you saw obesity. Basically anywhere you look in health, not, not looking so good. Um, in terms of buildings, we've created these bubbles. They're very airtight and we build them out of different materials than we used to. More plastics and adhesives. We fill them full of things that off-gas. So now, indoor air pollution, the EPA says, is two to five times worse than outside. We spend so much time in there. Not great. Environmentally, you guys know, you guys know the story here. Our power consumption is way, way up. And because we make most of our power from coal, that means a lot of pollution. We're polluting like crazy whether we're making stuff or making energy. Our mining makes rivers like these. Clear cutting. Forests are meant to be the lungs of the earth. We're just chopping them down. Coal mining. We just rip the tops off mountains and destroy the whole area. And still one and a half billion people on the planet still don't have access to clean drinking water. So the big question should be though, with all this, there's a lot of excess. We've got a lot more stuff and a lot more space. The big question should be, are we happier? And that's what really should matter. Unfortunately, in the last 50 years, it's pretty much flatlined even a little down. So with all this excess, with all this abundance, we're still not there. We're not happier. So that's where we're at. We've got a bunch of debt, not super healthy, huge footprints, and same happiness or a little less. So I'm here to talk to you today about a new proposal that maybe, just maybe, less 
may actually equal more. I'd like to suggest that we like the hour and a half movie, not the six hour movie. That editing is a good thing because it pairs it down to the essence, the stuff that matters and allows you to focus. So I'm proposing that we do a little editing, a little life editing. Edit our stuff, edit our space, a little media diet. Even with people, we know a lot of people. Wouldn't it be better to spend more quality time with a smaller group than spread it out? So I think the, basically what I'm proposing doesn't require, it's not, ex, not super expensive, doesn't require crazy technologies, doesn't even require a tremendous amount of effort, and we've even actually been there before. So I want you to think about the luxury of less. Most of you have probably at, at a certain point lived in smaller environments, in a dorm at college, it's traveling in a hotel, a couple bags for a few days, maybe a few weeks. Everything on your back, camping. Or maybe in a boat, very small space. Whatever it was, I bet you that you had a little more freedom, a little more ease, a little more time. And that was nice. So I'm proposing that done well, less stuff and less space is going to equal a smaller footprint. It's going to actually save you some money. It's going to be better for your health and it's going to make you happier. Buckminster Fuller talks about how you, if you want to, uh, if you don't like the current model, you can't just rail against it. You've got to build something new, something so compelling that everyone wants to move towards it. So I'm trying to build a new model, and it's called Life Edited. Essentially what we're trying to do is find all the solutions that enable small living, whether it's spatial design, product design, behavioral design, sharing systems. I want to find the good stuff that's out there, point to it, build the stuff that's missing, or act as a catalyst to get that stuff created. Four main approaches to life edited. First of all, you have to learn how to edit ruthlessly, and this one's key. That shirt that I've been carrying around for the last six years and I've worn not at all or a few times, it's time for me to let that go, to pass it on to someone else or to recycle it in some manner. So we need to learn to let go and edit and also stem the inflow, stop the retail therapy. We also need to learn to think small. We want things that are designed for how they're used the vast majority of the time, not that rare instance. Why have a five burner stove if you rarely use more than three? We want things that nest, things that stack, it's a great chair, it folds and hangs, looks great on the wall. Here's my bike, it's a Strida, great commuting bike. It folds easily and rolls, I hang it in my closet. Books, I've gotten rid of 90% of them. Digi with digitization, you can basically take physical things and make them disappear, it's somewhat magic. I ended up with my Android phone with a Kindle reader. It's great. I've read about 12 books on it. I have my library in my pocket at all times. Amazing. CDs, m music, movies, Spotify, amazing streaming, all the new stuff and all the old stuff at a reasonable price. Netflix, TV and movies, it's all there and the, it keeps growing. Paperwork, scanner. Scan it all makes it disappear, and it all becomes searchable. Finally, or not finally, uh, we want to focus, I'm not saying don't buy any things. We need things, obviously. But we want to focus on getting less but better. Saul Griffith talks about heirloom design. We want to design things to take 10 times, as, to last 10 times as long, and I agree. Bargain hunters, think about this. If you buy something that's twice as expensive, but it lasts four times as long, that's half price. That's a good deal. So you can buy great things as long as they last a long time. This is a great ad. I'm not, I'm not advocating buying $10,000 watches, but uh, it says you never actually own blah, blah, blah. You merely take care of it for the next generation. That's a great concept. We want a great pair of shoes that can be resold and last for years. The perfect black dress, well-made, that you can keep using for years. 
a leather man, probably have it for decades, espresso maker, a quality Leica digital camera, a great pen, a great chair, all these things may be a little more expensive, but if well made, they'll last forever. Uh, cast iron cookware, cookware, absolutely indestructible. So there's a cognitive load. Stuff occupies space in your head. So stuff isn't passive. Stuff wants your time, your attention, your allegiance. So we want to get less stuff so that that stuff is actually worth uh, spending, att putting attention on it, essentially. Finally, multifunctionality. We want multifunctional spaces and multifunctional products. Buckminster Fuller again, he said, like, our, our bedrooms are empty two-thirds of the time, our living rooms seven-eighths of the time, our offices half of the time. We need to think about this. We want to get the most bang for our buck out of our architecture. Essentially try to move towards 24-hour architecture. An empty room isn't helping anyone. Here's a great uh, example, and, and the same thing applies in products. Very space efficient toilet and sink where the gray water feeds the toilet. You don't sleep when you eat. You don't eat when you sleep. So here resource furniture has this amazing bed that folds down. The, the table folds automatically out of the way. That makes sense, getting two functions at least out of one room. Here's a side table that expands from like 17 inches to 115. All of a sudden you can seat 10 people. The first project for Life Edit, I wanted to build my own apartment essentially. So I bought a 420 square foot apartment in Manhattan and basically trying to cram all the functionality of a 600, 800 into 400, thereby uh, saving a bunch of money on buying it, also not being able to put as much stuff in it and uh, lesser utilities and therefore lesser footprint. Here's an initial shot of the place. It wasn't so nice. <laughs> uh, whoops. We ran a design contest with Javoto.com. 300 entries, amazing. Cataline Sandu, got a great relationship with this guy now. Um, this uh, second year architecture student, Romania. Here's the apartment, I'm going to rip through it. 420 square feet, so fairly open. And basically we get a lot of use out of it because we do a lot with the main space, transforming furniture and a moving wall. So here's my stand-up uh, or sit-down office tucked in the corner there. Whoops. A little stool adjusts. You can sit four people at that table or six six or eight or ten. So I'm able to have nice big dinner parties. There you go. And nice little movie theater. And the wall moves out, revealing some full down bunk beds in the back. So a nice civil way to have guests over. A little privacy. And my bed folds right out over the couch like that. And there we go. Close. Here's a bathroom. We separated the components so that one person could use each at a time, making it more efficient. And we made this little room. It has a little seat that folds down. Whoops. OK. So we made a little phone booth, a little privacy if you want to get away. <laughs> so it's smart thinking about, so this is the inside of the guest bedroom. We did it in wood. And here is the kitchen. So what we're trying to create is something that's financially smart, makes a lot of sense, is extremely healthy because of the materials that we put into it. Then we have a, a Zander a heat recovery ventilator, which allows us to uh, filter the air and have really fresh air, but clean air. And the materials are so good that there's not a lot of off-gassing and, of course, filtered water and that sort of thing. So very healthy. And also, because it's so small, green materials, energy-efficient appliances, well-insulated, we took out three out of the four radiators. So it'll be very green. And it's designed for me. So it's a perfect fit, and I'm really excited to live there. Common sense. 
What we're not saying is that everyone needs to live in 420 square feet. Kids, uh, depending on your situation, you're going to, pets, we're not saying that. We're also not saying that this is the aesthetic. I happen to like this aesthetic. It's not about the aesthetic. This is a, this is a core idea and it can be done in any aesthetic. It doesn't have to be expensive. We're working on making this very as inexpensive as we can. And we're also not saying you have to renounce all your possessions. We're just saying less but better. So how can you get started? Do an hour of personal editing. Pick an area of your life. Could be your, your closet or your kitchen or your garage. Go through, spend some time, get rid of some stuff. Find out what you really need. Second, try a sharing system. This is the future, I promise you. So whether it's Netflix or Spotify or Airbnb, Zipcar, there's so many of these to try. Try one. Finally, think about your next move. Maybe you could consider buying or renting a smaller space. It's my belief that editing is the skill of this century. If we're really smart and we pull together all these solutions in a conscious manner, we can create a way of life that's financially smart, that's better for your health, that's better for the planet, and makes us happier. I believe that done smartly, less can equal more. Thank you.